course, behind this is love. Love to see, love to, to be at sea, to explore. So in 2007, I started my first bearing. My preference is my dream boat is bearing a key. Same capability, same function, same everything, just a few times cheaper. First day we discuss, second day we sign, the third day we receive deposit. Oh. Nice sky, little clouds and five meter waves. I still think it was not a good idea to move the boat during the Mistral. Every bearing can cross the ocean, including our cats. Freedom! Freedom! How you became the person who you are today? How you entered yachting? I mean, why bearing? What, what is your background, I think? Mm, it's a hard question. I don't know why. <laughs> that's, that's the problem. <laughs> Um, I may say it's, it just happened this way, but um, of course behind this is love. Love to see, love to, to be at sea, to explore, to see new places. And um, I've had the boat since I moved to US in 93. In 96 I bought my first boat in US. And ever since I, I had the boat. But it was sport fishing, it was kind of like cruisers, local uh, travels and I start to have a dream about traveling far away and see some places and start to look for a suitable boat. That's probably started about 2000, like 24 years ago. Visited boat shows, visited some sea trials, the study and learn and find out that I can't find what I'm looking for. The US market is 99% is fiberglass boats in uh, exploration boats as well. And uh, I did not understand why fiberglass needed for heavy explorer. So and I was in search of steel boats and it was one-offs, mainly European and far from perfect. <laughs> then in 2005, I happened to be in China and learned that it's, you can build affordably there. And so in 2007, I started my first bearing. Didn't stop since that. So I was building and selling, then selling and building, and now we selling first, building after. So it was initial attempt to build a boat for myself, and I still have no boat. You don't have a boat? I don't, I don't have bearing. I have a boat, but not, not a bearing. Because we built a demo, we used to have a demo, as a company demo, Bearing 70, and we sold it two years ago at the Kangbo show. And then we started to build Bearing 88 as a demo. And then customer came across and he wanted like fast delivery. He was persuasive and we decided to sell it and start to build another one. So far, I don't have a Bearing, <laughs> but a lot of opportunities to, to join customers and travel and film. And so I'm, I don't feel like I don't have a boat. I feel like I spend enough time on the boat. So in today's world, bearing distinguishes two lines, basically. It's below 24 meters and above 24 meters. Yes, um, because below 24 meters, the boat could be uh, also CE certified or class certified. And we offer both class as an option. All our boats could be commercial charter class under 24 meters, which is not quite uh, common. What does it mean, commercial charter class? It means that you can officially charter it with MIBA contract. Our small boats accommodate from six to 10 people and from two to five crew. So it could be very, very good quality charters, especially because our Small boats provide the same quality and same comfort and same safety as our large boats. Sound-wise, vibration-wise, it's just smaller. The rooms are smaller, amenities are smaller, but again, it's less people. And my preference is my dream boat is Bearing 88. I hope I will build it someday. <laughs> Why is that? Why it's your... Because it's, it's enough space-wise. It's uh, five cabins. However, I prefer version with four cabins and big pantry attached to the 
uh, crew quarters. And this boat have range surpassing a lot of super yacht. We're packing 40,000 liters of fuel. It's about 13,000 gallons. And the boat's practical range is over 6,000 miles. It's a, <laughs> it's a lot. This boat can go anywhere and come back. It's a very heavy boat. And again, it's have a ratio like all our boats, one to one, the GT. It's 240 GT, 235 tons of displacement. It's match a lot of yachts of 120 foot by GT and displacement. So it's a beamy boat, spacious boat, very comfortable, very versatile. It's good for Mediterranean and it would be good for Antarctic and Arctic, especially if it's built with percussion for cold climate. We have this option too. This boat is, has the same architecture as a super yacht. Forward master on the main deck, the galley, the salon, uh, the staircase, and four staterooms down below, the crew quarters forward. Uh, very classic uh, layout for the super yacht, it just in short the package. However, our beam is 8.2 meters, which is typical for boats of 120, 110, 130 feet. So that's the pretty much, our boats are beamier than the other boats. So beam give you a good perception of space. You don't see the length when you're on the boat at any, any place. You don't perceive the length from one point. You, you don't see one or another end of the boat. However, beam, you sense everywhere. So boat is beamy, it's spacious, everything is relaxed. That's why I think 88 is ideal explorer with uh, 200 square meters inside and about the same amount of space outside. Nice flybridge, fully enclosable, air conditioned, you know, like. Yeah, so this is probably also one of the reasons why we have um, four of those 88s in build at the moment. Yes, yes, I think the most popular model today, we, we have four in build at this moment and two in sales process. Is there a typical bearing customer? So what is the experience level the customers are bringing in? Is, is there kind of, can we classify a typical bearing customer? It is hard because uh, we, we're getting some people, it's first, first boat ever. They study, they read, they learn, and then they decide for themselves they want to go uh, for steel boat. And majority of course it's experienced boaters who is upgrading. We had one customer who was downsizing from super yacht, which I think it makes sense because uh, expenses for the boat under 24 meters is uh, jumping down drastically. The cost of mooring, cost of insurance, the crew and everything, it's add up and you, you're not realizing that you have same quality in a smaller package at much cheaper cost and for many people it's it makes sense same capability same function same everything just a few times cheaper and probably more accessibility to some ports to some regions yes yes because you know bigger the boat the more limits you have with the draft with the size uh, in many places marinas will not accommodate 150 foot boat however 80 foot boat, yes, so it's also plus, and that's the advantage. How is it for you managing those 900 people? What, what is your task, in fact, today? What, what are you doing? Fortunately, I'm not managing. <laughs> I am in design, so all the bearings, including cats, um, is designed with our in-house team of three people. It's our naval architect. Uh, who is from hall number one of bearing with, with me. And it's an uh, exterior designer, he's in Tasmania. Uh, he is with us since 2010. So it's, it's already like 15 years and more of collaboration, close collaboration. Uh, but all the bearing products is designed by this team, except we had a couple projects which we uh, order for designers bearing 120 and uh, 165. Actually 120 it's just a perfection of the previous model which we had. We didn't change layout, it just is exterior styling. We upgraded I would say. So that's about 30% of my time. Mm -hmm. 
work time. Uh, I'm in sales and I'm in marketing. That's how my time is divided. And I love all three. And I love to build as well. And I love to be on the boat. However, designing and marketing and sales, you can perform from the boat the best way. That's what I like about this. I don't need to be all the time in the office. And uh, it's a lot of travels to sometimes too much travels. <laughs> I would like to maybe travel less, but for now it's impossible. So we have the boat shows now, in fact, approaching over the next couple of weeks. And um, we often have customers who come to the boat, who visit the shipyard, but then they can't decide. I mean, there's always, from, from the first visit to signing the contract or to committing, let's say, to new construction, it's always a little bit of time which is passing. Why would you say not to wait too long? I mean, how the, how the market has developed over the years and why it's, it's just sometimes also listening to your, to your emotions and heart and not to be too rational. To me, it's still uh, an enigma how people make a decision. I think decision-making process is different for all of us. Someone, bam. We had, just in the last 10 days, I had a record fast and record slow. We had a customer who learned about bearing. In one week after he discovered bearing for himself, he came to the shipyard and first day we discussed, second day we signed, the third day we received deposit. Wow. So the total duration of the sale was <laughs> 10 days. That's the absolute record. I never had it before and it, it was exciting. And yesterday I had a Zoom conference with potential customer who watching our videos, who is watching us in general for 10 years. First contact, he told me yesterday, 10 years, I'm looking at your boats, I'm looking at your boat. He currently have the boat, explorer, this, that, but 10 years, and now he decided that he's ready. 10 years, 10 days, and everything in between. <laughs> that's, that's how vast the range of people, this, people's decision-making process. I would say it's average two, maybe three years of decision making. From first learning, then maybe visit to the shipyard or visit to the boat show, see the boat, then visit to the shipyard, then pause for half a year. Something needs to fall down together. So we, it's, it's a slow process. We're not, uh, I don't think we need to speed up how customers push them. Yes, price has gone up. Prices go up, we all know this. And uh, we have our suppliers raising price, we are raising price. Uh, you know, before it was once a year, and now it's happening sometime twice a year. <laughs> That's maybe the, the only reason to, to do it faster because the real inflation rate, if you're sitting on uh, tons of cash, it's uh, shrinking by 10, 15% a year. Yeah, many times we have, I think, also customers, if they even don't have the time using the boats themselves, they're chartering the boat then and leveraging the cost of operation. You know, yes, um, we have customers who are glad to keep their boat in charter operation, but some people say, no, even if I spend two weeks a year on my boat, I don't want anybody be there, even sit on the couch, even be in the bed. So it's, it's also very two different mindsets. Younger people are more, I would say, pragmatic in this issue. They willing, they, they interested in chartering ability of the boat. So and, uh, they choose a charter class just in case, or they, they thinking that we, we're going to help to charter and offset their cost. So we, we have uh, underbuilt three customers who wants to us to do the management of the delivery and chartered as much as customer wish in a couple, three months. Because a lot of people, younger people, they're still working. They have two weeks here, one week here. So it's not like they cannot spend six months on the boat. So, and maybe combine two, three months a year 
And it also makes sense to own the boat if you charter it. If you don't charter, it's going to be a hole in the water where you pour the money. So it's not justifiable. So how, how does it look like? So you sign or you build a bearing boat, you receive your boat, and what happens next? You become part of a family, a club, or I mean, with management, etc. How There does it are work? four options our customers have. First, it's a sort of like building option. It's a two years of uh, warranty, mechanic maintenance, basically. Anything happened with the boat, customer calling us, and we solving the problem for, for him. We also have extended warranty, which they're paid for. Same thing, one phone call and all the problems related to the boats are solved. We also can manage the boat for the customer without chartering. Manage, take care of the mooring, crew, maintenance, and all the hospitality aspects, like provisioning before the trip, logistics, uh, in and out, and uh, voyage plan, entertainment on shore or at sea. So just to just manage for the customer. And uh, the, another package is uh, the same with management, but we're also chartering the boat. That's if boat is offered for charter operation. So we agree with the customer what dates he wants to use the boat and work around his schedule. Uh, and it's important to know a year ahead because most of the charter booked at least six months ahead of time. So uh, if customer willing to charter his boat, that's the full package, I would say. And we also uh, in process of setting up the bearing club. You know what I learned in this almost 17 years of boat building, uh, that people don't know exactly what they want to do with a boat. If you give them some ideas and maybe give them some support into achieving this, they will be much more receptive for them. Go somewhere, we want to do voyages, rallies, events. Uh, we want to make sure that bearing owners communicate with each other and we will help them to communicate. And uh, I have four customers who dreaming to go Northwest Passage. It might happen one, one year, maybe next year. We, we can go four or five boats um, and many other exciting destinations. A lot of people want to go to Baltic Sea. A lot of people want to go to Norway, fjords, Iceland, Greenland. So that's what our boat's for. And I think if you're an operator, uh, go to Greenland alone. No, I, I would say it's better have a flock of boats and uh, uh, maybe some experienced guys among the crew, mechanically inclined, you know, like good uh, crowd of people, and then we can go to any destination. Have you ever been to these places or any other no, cra crazy, no, crazy places? No, 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 I'm dreaming. On my bucket list, so many places I've never been. I, I think I would enjoy the aspect you asked me Uh, recently what I'm doing actually, what is my work. So design, marketing and uh, sales, but I would like to develop these passages, go destination, uh, organize fleet, organize people. That's what I enjoy to do and be on the water, be at sea. That's, that's most important. Have you ever taken like, bad weather conditions? On a bearing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, with bearing, yes, bad weather condition, but not as bad as I took on some fishing trips in Magadan. <laughs> it was, uh, it was scary. I don't want to repeat it. Uh, on bearing, yeah, we've been on 50 knot wind. We've been in um, five days. We were going from Hong Kong to Manila, Philippines, and it was all five days. Northeastern monsoon, 45 knots sustained, it's like a pipe. No gusts, just blowing. Nice sky, little clouds, and five meter waves. But this is something what happens out of the blue, or it was No, it's just, uh, it just a uh, weather pattern. In December, northeastern monsoon is blowing 
20 something days. We couldn't wait for the weather window because the customer wanted to make in Singapore uh, for Christmas. And we took off on December 3rd. So there is no chance. I mean, you can wait for a month and nothing will happen. It will be the same weather condition. Um, so, but when we get used to it, it was uncomfortable because the, the sea was a beam and sometimes green water comes to the middle of your salon windows. But we get used to it and in five days we were in Subic Bay. We were going through Mistral on Bering 55, it's hole number two. And uh, we were going from one tip to set. And the customer had just very little window of uh, opportunity. He came for weekend in order to relocate his boat from Antip to set for winter. And we have full-blown Mistral. And instead of going just you know, like 15 hours, we were going 36 hours. Our speed was two, three knots, the speed over ground. It was a waves very short, very steep, vertical, three good waves stop you. Stop your, your ground speed, zero. Your engine is working RPM, you should go eight knots, you go on zero. That was pretty tough, but the boat behaved very well. So you're getting used to it. Uh, when, when you're running in storm, at the beginning you kind of like, but then, then it's okay. So the trip to set was, I think it was the first real sea condition for the customer and he was very pleased with, with the boat. I still think it was not a good idea to, to, <laughs> to move the boat during the Mistral, so, but the boat behaved very well. What bearing was it? Bearing 55, hole number two of bearings. So it's in Australia now. It has a very, very interesting life. It was in America, it was in the Mediterranean, it was everywhere in like Indonesia, circumnavigate Australia. So this boat cover a lot of miles. So bearing boats can be in hotspot areas like Saint-Tropez, Monaco, etc. But also they are far beyond. Far beyond, because <laughs> every bearing can cross the ocean, including our cats. So freedom, freedom. Yeah.